Hi everyone, we are Igor and Irina, and we are going to explore Croatia for 29 glorious days before continuing on into Montenegro and Albania. And here is a plan for Croatia. In this challenge, we start in Zagreb, take a bus to Rijeka, walk to the island of Kirk, take another bus to Vilibit National Park, Hike for six days to Starigrad, take a bus to Zadar, then another bus to Split, hike for four days to Makarska, take a ferry to the island of Brach, hike to Bol, take a ferry to Hwar, and then another one to Split, and finally a bus to Dubrovnik before we cross the border with Montenegro. Originally, I planned on sharing the videos from our hiking adventures only. But the journey through cities was so much fun, I decided to share everything, so please enjoy! After we landed in Zagreb, the capital city of Croatia, we bought bus tickets to the historical center in a tiny store at the airport. It took us about three minutes to walk to the bus stop. The scheduler is posted on the bus stop wall, the bus to the historical center takes 25 minutes. And here is a tip for you. To get to know the city, spend some time riding trams. It is a fun, fast and a cheap way to see Zagreb. By the way, the first tram line was opened 131 years ago. It was a horse car tram. Today the city operates 15 tram lines. We were hoping to spend three nights in the city. I asked Igor not to book anything in advance, as I wanted the pilgrim experience of finding it the old-fashioned way by walking in. Arriving on Tuesday, so close to the off-season, what could go wrong, right? Well, when we walked into our first place, we learned that for the next three nights the lodging was limited and its prices sky high due to a big soccer tournament. We cut our plan at three nights to just one. We were not that much interested in the crowded city experience anyway. I couldn't wait to get to the coast. This decision was easy. But then came the hard part. In less than 24 hours, we had to do all organizational tests that could be otherwise spread out over a three-day period. Besides, finding a room and making dinner for tonight, we had to scout the train and bus station for departure times to Rijeka, book a hotel for tomorrow night, yes, no more walk-ins, go sightseeing, and finally, Shop for food supplies for our hiking challenge to the island of Kirk. Igor was scaring me with rumors that if we don't buy supplies in Zagreb, we are doomed. This proved to be not true, as we passed by a large supermarket before reaching our hotel on the outskirts of Rijeka. It wasn't necessary to buy anything in Zagreb. We managed to complete everything on our list, and here is something we learned about Zagreb and Croatia. Zagreb is set in a valley along the Sava River and the southern slopes of the Medvednica mountain. It is possible to hike from the city center to the mountain's highest peak. Out of 4 million people living in Croatia, about 1 million live in and around Zagreb, making it the largest city. The oldest known settlement in the area was Romans. Set at a crossroads of trade routes, it survived until the invasion of Slavs in the 6th century. Slavs brought the development of the national character to the region which became a part of the first Croatian kingdom under the first king Tamislav, with the first capital Nim, near Zadar. A monument to the Tamislav sits in a square named after the king in the group center district. At his back is the art gallery as the king faces the train station. Zagreb is comprised of 16 former settlements now city districts. 
The center districts was occupied by fields before joining the city limits in the 19th century. The settlement that is credited for development of the modern Zagreb was Gorni Grad, or Gradets. It was set onto a steep hill near the spring with the fields to the south. The first time Gradets was mentioned as Zagreb in 1094. When King Ladislaus of Hungary passed through it on his way back from conquering Croatian kingdom. The kingdom had a crisis of succession at the time. As first nobleman assassinated the king Zvanamir for committing to the crusades in the Middle East. Then the last dynastic king died childless and a civil war broke out. Zvanamir widow, Queen Helena wrote to his brother King Ladislaus of Hungary for help. Ladislaus invaded Croatia, marching freely through the entire land toward the Adriatic coast and the capital city of Knin. Meantime, some of the noblemen managed to crown a nobleman Peter Svacic as king. He met the Ladislaus army near the Gvost Mountains. In the battle that followed, Svacic was defeated marking the official union of the Croatian kingdom and Hungary that will last for 821 years. It was on his way back when King Ladislaus passed through Gradets. To celebrate his victory, he ordered the construction of a cathedral naming the place Zagreb from the Croatian word to scoop up. The cathedral was completed in 1217, as the area outside of Gradit slowly developed into a separate town occupied by mostly clergy. Locals call it Kaptol, from the Latin word Capitulum, for a group of monks. A bridge that connected two towns was called Bloody Bridge, as it witnessed many occasions of rivalry between them due to uncontrolled water mills construction. Fearing the Mongols, the citizens of Gradit strengthened their walls and built towers around their town. The Lothar Shak tower originally had a bell, but what is one bell in a town full of churches? Since 1877, a cannon fires daily from it to mark noon. <laughs> Capital, on the other hand, didn't invest in any fortifications. So when the attack finally came, much of it, including the 25 years old cathedral, was trashed. Gravitz, on the other hand, not only survived, it gave protection to the Croatian and Hungarian king Bela the Foss. As a token of his gratitude, the king declared it a free town, responsible directly to the king. The citizens were given many rights, one of which was the right to elect their own mayor. The cathedral was rebuilt. This time more churches were built in capital. But only at the end of the 15th century when Ottoman invasion became a real threat, the bishop ordered fortification around the cathedral and his residence. He also invested in fortifying the Sisak fortress that stood at the border with the Ottoman Empire and was the last frontier before capital. The Battle of Sisak was fought in 1593. The Croatian, Slovenian, German force of professional soldiers defeated the Ottoman army twice its size. For every battle, Croatian soldiers used to wear scarves around their necks made by their wives. Later, during the Thirty Years' War, the Croats will meet French who will adopt the scarf, naming it after the Croats, Cravat. In memory of the Sisak battle, a bell of the Grub Cathedral rings daily at 2 p.m. While capital was building its walls, the citizens of the Free Gradits were organizing their government. The heart of the town was St. Mark Square, with the church of St. Mark in the middle, surrounded by the town hall and residence of the mayor. 
In 1557, Gradits became creation capital, with the city also being chosen as the seat of the governor of Croatia in 1621. The Church of St. Mark had its roof tiles laid out with the coat of arms of the Kingdom of Croatia, Slavonia and Dalmatia, and the coat of arms of the city of Zagreb. Today, the St. Mark's Square is still the home to the city council, the Croatian parliament and the constitutional court. It is also the site of the inauguration of Croatia's presidents. Becoming Croatian capital city brought construction boom to graduates and capital, making it necessary to expand beyond the protection of their walls. A garden below both towns was converted into a marketplace, which is now a square named after Governor Ilacic, with his statue in the middle. Finally, in 1851, Yelachic united Gradets and Capital under Zagreb. Today, the combined towns of Gradets and Capital are known as Upper Town, forming the old city with its medieval churches, palaces, museums, galleries, and government buildings. The construction of the tram lines allowed the suburbs to merge gradually into Low Town or Center where in 1895 the Croatian National Theatre was opened by Emperor Franz Joseph I of Austria. Zagreb is located in an area of high seismic activity. It experiences around 400 earthquakes a year. The last strong earthquake was in 2020. It made so much damage that all city museums are currently closed for repairs. During it, one of the cathedral spire broke off and crashed onto the roof of the adjusting archbishop's palace. And that is all I have about Zagreb. On September 6, we took 1.30 p.m. bus to Rijeka. The bus took about two and a half hours. Rain was on the forecast but it already passed by the time of our arrival. Suryeka welcomed us with sun. The city is currently the third largest in Croatia with a population of a little more than a hundred thousand, compared to one million in Zagreb. The city sits on the Adriatic coast at the mouth of the river Ricina and is surrounded by mountains from all three sides. During its existence, Rijeka was known under different names, as it's changed hands often. But all those names mean river in different languages. In the 7th century, when the Slavs settled in, it was a stronghold surrounded by a wall. This is the Baroque city clock tower, an entrance to the inner city. The Tersat Castle. A 13th century fortress still sits in a strategic location at the old Roman lookout point. And the Adriatic Palace is the city symbol of the maritime power. It has two front facades with eight symbolic statues. Rijeka, just like Zagreb, has its own building of the Croatian National Theatre. But we left the city walking along the coast to our Hotel Lucia for the night. As tomorrow, we are going to walk all the way to the island of Kirk. I heard its bridge is the longest in Europe. Thanks for watching. Till next time.